Hello, and welcome to the seventh episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster. We're back in Project Utopia, and we're still working out here on the Enchanted Forest, but uh, we are very close to wrapping it up now, as we have finished almost all of the actual physical construction work, and are really, really, the main task I have left will be done in this episode, or will be done probably in the next episode when you'll see a lot of forest creation. So, uh, what we got to accomplish here during this uh, little session we got going on here is the development of really this hill, kind of here, this haunted hill area, and the ride predator, which um, we added just at the end at the episode. You can see this wings down there in the bottom of the screen as I'm kind of painting this terrain here. And I think that this addition was really, it was kind of the, one of the three big, you kind of have three main things in here. You have a kind of easier ride, you have a more thrilling ride, and then you have the roller coaster. And this is designed to fill that kind of more um, thrill ride aspect to this part of the park. We came out of just finishing the food court, and so what we're going to be doing here is kind of building the area kind of behind the food court, as you know, as I said earlier, we placed the ride this time. So we're going to be filling up that inner area with woods. You see here we're actually working on this, what I'm calling sort of the haunted hill. Now the haunted hill is more of... What I wanted to create was kind of a sight line, some sort of like iconic element for the park to feature. And, essentially, and much earlier on, I built that plantation up there on that hill. And the goal of what I wanted this hill to kind of be is have this kind of outlook from when you hit it from a certain angle, you have this kind of hill on the top of the woods with the wooden coaster kind of flying by at certain periods of time. It really gives it that kind of a haunted, no one goes there kind of look and um, adds a major element to not only that part of the ro uh, park, but also to the roller coaster to really create kind of this dynamic, you go by the house kind of iconic kind of <laughs> catch to the ride. What you see me working on here is, uh, or what you saw me working on at the beginning of the episode is that fence that kind of goes around it. Um, kind of, again, I want to give it that farm kind of look, and all, most farms, you know, have a fence to kind of signify their area, what territory is theirs. And I added a bunch of dead um, trees, plants, etc. there to kind of really solidify that uh, feel. And worked on, definitely worked on some of the groundwork there, put a lot of that kind of darker ground, and I think what that really did was added sort of this kind of like dead grass kind of atmosphere, and you saw I kind of um, blended it into the sides a lot. So what that um, really gave the park was it really, um, it gives it kind of that, the forest isn't just some uniform green thing. There's a lot of forests that have these little open areas and stuff like that. So I wanted to really um, make that as realistic as possible. Now what I'm working on here is this kind of pathway here. Um, and I wanted this pathway to be an area where um, people can go up and kind of like look at the forest. So it kind of signifies a landmark and it really says, hey, this is a landmark because it has its own unique path and unique way to walk. And what I'm doing here is I spent a lot of time trying to decide how I wanted to do support. So you see, I actually ended up using these kind of little um, cylinders kind of here to actually um, make these sort of pillars to kind of go into the path work. But my original idea was to have planks of wood and have it kind of like a grate-esque kind of structure under it. So I had just straight wooden pieces around that. But um, the realistic nature of that was not super great, as well, that would be something very hard for parks to maintain. Those parks just kind of go into this more modern kind of steel support kind of look here. Uh, what else is going on? So we have uh, some work there but in the background on um, Predator. As you see here, I'm kind of slowly moving these around. It gets kind of difficult um, moving sometimes trying to space. Because I think a big problem with Planet Coaster is spacing. So a lot of the times, especially in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you had kind of that grid you got to work with. And I think the grid was, you know, you were stuck to the grid in Roller Coaster Tycoon, which made it almost essential. And Planet Coaster is really not as much because you aren't stuck to that strict path of of the grid. Um, I think if Planet Coaster had a way, it might have a way, honestly. I have not done extreme amount of research on it, but if Planet Coaster had a bit stronger way to implement just, hey, looking at, you know, the grids and looking to say oh, my objects are and place them in appropriate areas, I think it would help a lot. So as I kind of got through this project, I've gotten better and better at kind of working on these Q areas, making them quickly, making my forest quickly. And one thing I kind of decided to do here is I like to have this part out of the queue that's small but covered. And I decided to do this for this ride. Um, I decided to not go with the super original idea and copy the uh, the overhead supports from Pixie Station. Um, mainly because I feel like Pixie Station had a very general kind of outcropping. It's something that you see a lot, and I was kind of honestly running out of ideas and really trying to fly through this sort of the park. Um, but it does, I don't think there's much, you're not really losing any merit, and I don't think, I think that amusement parks actually do do that in a realistic basis. They will take some of the same structures that they do really. If they have an idea that works, why would you try something else completely different? So I push the bush, and I'm going to go ahead and put some rocks again, trying to distribute the um, types of rocks, make sure I have a bunch of different rocks at a bunch of different places here. And I like to kind of work on these rocks, and I really wanted to make the foliage denser on this ride because you have these kind of swings here. 
And one of these swings to kind of have some sort of extra throwing aspect because, as I said, this is a throw ride. I wanted to have that throw aspect of, like, the close call kind of look here. So I'm working on both sides of this first, placing a bunch of trees and foliage here, and I'm very... Uh, but the problem was there's not really any trees that I could put under it to really um give it that close call effect because they would all hit it because it actually goes pretty close to the ground where I was trying to place something. Um, I think you'll get quickly here. I was trying to work on this corner real quick, uh, make it a little more rounded. But as you'll see here, what I'm actually going to do is... um. Finish air filling up this area with trees, and a little later, what you're going to see me do is I'm going to take a bunch of bushes and I'm going to start stacking bushes. And with that, I think that purpose of that was really for me to find a way to give it that close call feel, but also give it a much more give me a much more controlled way to do it. So you see, I'm placing a bunch of random bushes here, and I'm going to keep building them up until I get right almost to the feet of the ride. So when people come flying down, they're actually going to get real close to it, and it's going to be like, holy crap, you know, it's going to have that near miss kind of effect. And uh, one of the problems is I was kind of looking at this, I'm kind of like, well, it was a little hole, and you get a little close to it. So what I did is I added these um, tree roots in here. And what the tree roots actually do is it kind of looks like a trunk in a way. So when you look into it, you kind of see, oh, you know, it does have a base. So almost I made them look like a fake tree. See, I'm just looking around there to make sure it's actually getting the close call that I'm looking for. Um, what I wanted to do is instead of, I wanted to kind of, as the path goes around the ride, I wanted to have kind of two main parts to it. I wanted to have one side actually be like the big, like, photo shot of the ride kind of thing. And the other half, I wanted to actually focus on that um, that hillside there. And I think to do that, what I did was I decided to make that wall there so people aren't looking at, you know, this um, big swing attraction. They're actually paying attention to the hill as I want them to. So you see here, I'm going to use another one of these roots um, to place the sign for um, Predator and actually make it, uh, you know, have a name. And you saw what I did to this size. I made much lower bushes. Um, this is to give it more of that, you know, cinematic people walk up to it, whoa, kind of awe factor. Because this is, when people walk this way, this is what I want them to see. This is what I want them to be paying attention to. So go ahead and call in the bushes now. One thing I did have a problem with is kind of, sometimes I think in Planet Coaster, when you get one of these default templates, you're forced to kind of work with the colors you have, work with the lighting you have. And I don't really like that aspect of it. I wish there was a little more freedom and a little more, um variety in the way you can change some of these things. So Funny Coaster definitely has a lot more variety than all of its predecessors, but definitely there are always things you can improve on, more ways you can um, implement for people to change the game. So I'm kind of going through here, like filling up some of these empty spots I left earlier when I was designing the station and kind of put that roof in. I like never really went back deep enough to find all the problems and stuff I left out. I think that those, um, you saw me placing earlier right in front of the ride, I think those round bushes have really grown on me. I think they've given a sort of, um, less, or they kind of perform a role of a more stereotypical bush, but they also allow me to color them. So it's very easy to kind of give it this more dynamic feel. Now what you see me here is I'm actually going to be doing, building a forest. Now this is, this is the last main part I had to do for the Enchanted Forest, so... Um, go ahead and, and uh, I may turn this into a sort of three-step process, and I did this for all the way around um, Forest Lord, which was quite the feat, and um, probably might be covering the next episode, maybe a little bit of that in the next episode before we hop into Rivertown. So my first major step was I always like to, play, to place the rocks first, and I tried to scatter around the alpine rocks, the tropical rocks, and then the... Um, I don't remember the exact name from off the top of my head, but they're like um, the greener rocks, and they're actually made to be part of a forest. So you see here, I get a very dense ground. I definitely want a very strong ground layer first, because I want that kind of low, lower texture quality, and I want to see, you know, when you look past the tree, you don't just see grass. I want them to see something on the ground every time. And then I went ahead and placed the bushes. So same, th same kind of idea. I placed a lot of these big bushes, a lot of these... Um, more stereotypical bushes, and then I went through and I placed some of these, um, the smaller, the green leafy bushes were really useful. I placed some flowers in different spots so you can kind of see the flowers of the trees. Uh, finally, I added um, the actual trees. So, um, first tree I always added was the oak tree, and the oak tree is definitely the biggest tree that I decided to use for this. So, you see here I'm adding some of the, um, some of the other smaller trees as I'm going through out some of the ash trees, some of these, um, evergreen trees, for etc. Or, for example, excuse me. And, um, I think what this um, does is by placing the big tree first, I kind of like fill in the gaps. As you see, I'm kind of filling in the gaps right now and making sure it's like different types of trees. And I think that this kind of really created that dense forest look, and it really made this part, part of the area pop. And it re what really happened with it, which I was the goal, oh, and goal, the thing here, I'm adding some birch trees right now, is I really kind of made this immersive environment for the roller coaster. Speaking of the roller coaster, coming up here in a few seconds is actually going to be a POV of the roller coaster going through its last and third lift hill of the ride. So I'm going to leave you to enjoy that, and I'll catch up with you next episode. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.